First thing I'm gonna say is thank everybody for being here. No, it's cold. My hands are cold, my head is cold. But my name is Abdullah Muhammad. I'm with the organization ACE, Alliance for California for Community Empowerment with the LA chapter. And I'd like to introduce our coalition partners that's here. So our first one is uh, Sage. Sage, where's public council at? Those are lawyers, young. DSA? SEIU not here, but y'all could cheer him on anyway. Hey, what the hell? Churla! United Hair! CPC! Coco! Scope! Intercity Struggle! Grand Gang! Whoa! Protector Pastoral! In the city law. Some more lawyers, huh? Inquilinos, who need us. Did, did I say that right? Keep LA housed. So the reason we're here is to fight to have better rent control in the city of LA. Our community's been having a housing crisis for many, many years. It's nothing new. You can't hear me? Because rents are too damn high and everything else is too low, and that's our wages. So if our wages can't keep up with inflation and the rent, so we have a problem in there, don't we? And we also living under an RSO firm that's 40 years old. So something has to change there. So that's why we had a crisis in housing that we have today. The current formula does not work. Here it is. 100% CPI, that's Consumer Price Index, an inflation measure, 3% minimum, 8% maximum, 1% additional for gas, and 1% additional for electricity if the landlord provided. All right? So let's keep on. It's not, I don't have too much more because we have some speakers that's going to come up and speak, all right? So the, the urgency is right now. For 23 years of the last 40 years, landlords have been raising rents 3% even though inflation has been down, while our wages have been stagnated. This outdated formula is one of the reasons we have this housing crisis, and we need to change that right now. So organizations, community organizations like ours and our friends and the unions, we've come together to alleviate the housing crisis to protect our seniors living on fixed income and also to protect our low-income families and our union workers and tenants in general. So our formula is very simple if we understand it, okay? The floor, zero percentage, minimum. The maximum ceiling, 3%. That's right. From now on, not temporarily, from now on. 6% CPI, the consumer price index, and even more, 3%. So today we have stories from our community leaders, union members, council members to support LARSA. So here we go with the testimony. So our first speaker is from Sherla. Her name is Rosa Maria Cruz. Where's Rosa? Woo! Come on up, Rosa. I'm going to translate real quick. I'm going to translate. Oh, go, go ahead. We're going to translate first. All right, vamos a traducir un poquito. Buenos días, Los Ángeles. ¿Cómo están? Como ustedes saben, hemos estado atravesando una crisis de vivienda acá en Los Ángeles. Las rentas están demasiado altas y nuestros salarios están demasiado bajos. Tenemos una fórmula de control de renta que ya tiene 40 años. Es una fórmula que no sirve para nada para poder arreglar los problemas que tenemos nosotros de vivienda. Es una fórmula que tiene un mínimo de un 3%, un máximo de un 8%, más un por ciento por gas y otro por ciento por energía, que termina siendo un 10%. Ustedes acá, inquilinos, ¿pueden pagar un 10% de incremento en su renta? Es urgente que hagamos algo ya mismo. 
Durante los últimos 40 años, 23 de esos años, los dueños han podido subir la renta a más de 3%, que no es justo para nosotros. Esta fórmula es obsoleta y por eso la tenemos que sacar y le pedimos a nuestros concejales que nos apoyen para cambiar esta fórmula. Las organizaciones comunitarias y los sindicatos están pidiendo mejorar nuestra crisis de vivienda para proteger a nuestros adultos mayores que ya están retirados, proteger a nuestras comunidades de bajos ingresos, proteger a nuestras familias y también a nuestros trabajadores que se han sindicalizado y a nuestros inquilinos en general en Los Ángeles. Nuestra fórmula es muy simple. Queremos un piso de un 0% y un máximo de un 3%, nada más, nada menos. Hoy vamos a estar escuchando de nuestras historias de nuestra comunidad, vamos a estar escuchando de, de personas sindicalizadas y también de los concejales. Entonces queremos darle la bienvenida a Chirla. Chirla, por favor. Buenos días, buenos días, mi nombre es Zenaida, vengo del Valle de San Fernando. Buenos días, mi nombre es Zenaida, uh, vengo del Valle de San Fernando, soy miembro de Chirla y esta mañana estamos, estamos aquí para apoyar la ley Tajo. Uh, yo vengo... Uh, Tuve que separarme de mi familia porque es... Hable más fuerte, por favor. ¿Se puede gritar? Oh. Vengo de... Um, yo estaba viviendo en Lancaster, pero tuve que separarme de mi familia porque no tenemos para pagar una renta. Es muy alta. Y este... Estamos aquí para apoyar la ley Tajo. Le pedimos a los legisladores que por favor bajen el precio de las rentas. Thank you. Gracias, Senaida. Eh, so this was Senaida eh, Tolentino. She's a tenant and a tenant leader from Chirla. She, li she lives in Council District 6, uh, Council Member Padilla's district. Uh, this is a tenant that has been struggling financially actually used to have to move to Lancaster because of the high cost of living. And she's urging council members to update this much needed formula. Without updating this formula, tenants like herself will be displaced because tenants cannot afford rent. Angelinos, tenants, simply cannot afford rent. And if people cannot afford rent, they're gonna be pushed into the streets and displaced to other nearby cities, such as, such as Lancaster, Victorville, and such, and so on. So it's really important for the council members to update. She's also here to encourage the council members to support the tenant anti-harassment ordinance, or better known as Tahoe. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Rosa. Our next speaker is from Council District 4, Council Raman. Raman. Good morning. Oh, I'm very short, sorry. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's spooky season. And you know what scares me? Rent increases that are so high that people are leaving the city of Los Angeles. I want to give you guys a little bit of a history lesson here. The city's rent stabilization ordinance, which actually covers three quarters of our rental stock here in Los Angeles, was set 40 years ago for a time period that is very different from now. It allows for a floor of 3% increases every single year and an 8% ceiling and allows additional rent increases on top of that of up to 2% if your landlord provides certain things like gas or electricity. You can see how year after year, 
These rent increases have added up. And if you look at the history of tenants who are living in these RSO units year after year, what happened was that rent went up more than their incomes went up. Did your incomes go up? No. But did your rent go up? Other major cities in the state of California that have passed these kinds of rent stabilization ordinances, even those that have passed these ordinances later than the city of Los Angeles, have taken the opportunity over and over again to look at these ordinances and to ensure that these increases are in line with what people can actually afford. But here in the city of Los Angeles, we have not touched this formula for over 40 years. Is that right? I am very excited to talk about this issue of rent increases. In 2023, when we passed an incredibly strong set of tenant protections, when we were leaving the pandemic, thanks to all of your advocacy, we also asked the housing department to take a look at this formula and to make sure that the changes annually that we were making in that formula reflected what tenants were experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. Does that sound unreasonable to any of you? No. It sounds absolutely right and absolutely what the city of Los Angeles should be doing. I'm very excited to be here with my colleague, Councilmember Soto Martinez, who re-upped this request to get this study done. What we need today what we need today is a common sense formula that works for LA's market, that works for tenants, and that works for landlords, that works to keep people housed, and that works to keep Los Angeles housing economy thriving. But that is not what we have today, and that is what we are here to fight for. I want to just say that we have now waited for almost two years, two years, for a response to this study. That is way too long. Way too long. That is way too long. And so I am here to say today, as you are fighting for a more just city, as you are fighting for a city that tenants can continue to thrive in, that I am here to ensure that the city is responsive to these very reasonable questions, that we are looking at what costs tenants are experiencing in these units, that we are looking at the kinds of costs that even landlords are facing to maintain these units, and that we build a system that is just, that is beautiful, where everyone in Los Angeles can stay housed. That is my goal. That is my commitment as the chair of the Housing and Homelessness Committee. That is the commitment I'm making to you today. Thank you all for your constant attention to this issue, and thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Let's give it up for Councilmember Nitya Raman. Woo. So I'll be quickly just capturing uh, the essence of that in Spanish, eh, bien rapidito en español. Eh, muchas gracias, Concejal Nitya Raman, por estar aquí apoyándonos. Eh, Pues ya estamos en la etapa o en el tiempo de miedo, ¿verdad? De Halloween. Pero ¿qué es lo que da más miedo? Los altos costos de vivienda, los altos costos de las rentas, porque la renta sube y sube y los ingresos bajan y bajan. Entonces, ah, desafortunadamente, esta fórmula que dicta los incrementos de la renta está muy atrasada. Más de 40 años, ¿verdad? Que no se ha actualizado. Y más de tres cuartos de viviendas, unidades de la ciudad de Los Ángeles están protegidos bajo la ley de control de renta, las cuales están siendo impactadas por, por estos incrementos, ¿verdad? Sabemos que actualmente las rentas se pueden subir de 4 a 6 por ciento. Sin embargo, este estudio que el Departamento de Vivienda tiene que publicar ha estado pues en proceso más de dos años y durante la pandemia luchamos por muchas protecciones, muchas de ellas las ganamos y una de ellas era exigir actualizar esta fórmula y todavía no lo hemos logrado. ¿Cuál es la tardanza? Porque cada día que pasa más personas que van a estar siendo desplazadas van a tener que irse de Los Ángeles porque no tienen el dinero para pagar la renta. 
Entonces, necesitamos pelear por un sistema más justo para proteger a todas las inquilinas e inquilinos. Y agradece al concejal eh, Soto, ¿verdad? Martínez, que está aquí, que va a hablar también en un ratito, por apoyar y liderar esta propuesta de actualizar la fórmula de LARSO. Muchas gracias. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman. Our next speaker is from UTLA. She's the treasurer. Her name is Gloria Martinez. All right, Gloria. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Gloria Martinez. Um, I'm the treasurer of United Teachers Los Angeles. And on behalf of the UTLA officers and the 38,000 UTLA members that we represent, we are here to, um, to stand with this broad coalition and an in support of Larso. Today I'm here um, because we are urging city council to do the right thing. We thank the city council members that are already out here in support. I think what council member Nithya Rodman stated is a lot of the frustrations that teachers across the city of Los Angeles are experiencing. I need the council, the city council, to understand and hear the teachers and educators of Los Angeles about the anxiety that our students carry with them every day on the issues on, like housing, like immigration status, and their overall mental well-being that impact their day-to-day -day life both inside the classrooms and outside of them. I also need the public to understand how the angst and fears of the students shape their learning conditions. Across this city, throughout the city of Los Angeles, there's upwards of up to 40,000 students that walk into their classroom without having a place to call home. And despite homeless, homelessness going down ever so slightly across the city, LAUSD actually saw an increase of unhoused students in the last school year. This is why LARSO is so important. This is why the stabilization of rent means so much to the families of LA Unified and to the families of Los Angeles. There are so many struggles that our students face, so many struggles that they overcome. The over-testing, the lack of mental well-being and the resources at our schools, the need for more investments for arts and career pathways. But imagine what those struggles look like for the 40,000 students that face homelessness and the thousands more that are on the brink of it every single month. We all have a lot to do to fix homelessness across the city. Teachers deserve to live in the city that they teach in. Educators deserve to afford rent, deserve the dream to buy a home. Parents and students across the city deserve somewhere safe to go home to every single night. And so for today, UTLA across the city, the 38,000 members we represent, the nearly 400,000 students in this district, we urge the city council to do the right thing. Renters across LA deserve dignity. They deserve to worry about the rent going up so high that they would find themselves without a home because of the increase. Many of, this, of these renters are families with students within LAUSD, which is why UTLA is in support out here today in support of LARSO. Thank you very much. Gracias, compañera Gloria. Eh, bien rapidito, super quick in Spanish. Eh, la compañera Gloria Martínez del Sindicato de Maestros en la Ciudad de Los Ángeles, ¿verdad? Entonces, bien rapidito, ¿verdad? Eh, ella representa y ha estado trabajando con miles de maestras y maestros en la ciudad que también son inquilinas e inquilinos. Y también están pasando muchas de esas dificultades el no poder pagar su renta, el no poder vivir en donde trabajan. Eh, muchos de los estudiantes que, que van a las escuelas de, eh, de la ciudad, ¿verdad? De, del distrito de LUSD, están viviendo muchos problemas de salud mental, inestabilidad económica y también de vivienda. 
alrededor de 40 mil estudiantes del distrito han reportado no tener un hogar estable, lo cual impacta severamente su salud mental, su habilidad de enfocarse y de rendir en las escuelas. El Distrito de Los Ángeles también miró un incremento de estudiantes que no tienen dónde vivir. Aunque la ciudad reporte que el promedio de personas sin hogar ha bajado, estudiantes del distrito han reportado una, un incremento, ¿verdad?, eh, de no tener un hogar. Estos son unos pocos de los muchos problemas que los estudiantes están pasando. Y por eso la compañera pide a los concejales que hagan lo correcto, que actualicen la fórmula, que apoyen a los estudiantes, que apoyen a los maestros y que nos aseguremos que inquilinas e inquilinos puedan vivir con dignidad, con derechos, ¿verdad? Y que puedan estar tranquilos en sus hogares sin estarse estresando de cómo van a pagar la renta y si tal vez el día de mañana van a terminar en la calle. Gracias. All right, all right. Thank you, Gloria. Our next speaker, but I'm going to say this first. I, had, I, I was start to say it earlier while I was sitting in my walker, you know. And uh, we always like to start off with a prayer, but I'm not going to pray. I'm just going to say God is great. That's it. That's a prayer by itself. All right, so I want everybody to know that we are God-fearing people. We believe in what we're doing is right. And it is right. Why? Because we're human beings. And these are things that we're supposed to have living in a decent, civilized society. And if we don't have them, we have to protect what we have and also get more. So I just wanted to say that. Was that all right with you guys? Yeah. All right. Next is going to bring up Councilman Hugo Soto. He's the champion of this bill. And like she said, the councilman said earlier, he the one brought it back to the council. And we like to say thank you. And he's our next speaker. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for emceeing this event and for being such a, a, a tireless worker on these issues for so many years. I've, I've heard you've been here so long. Uh, yeah, uh, so anyways, much buenos dias, buenos, buenos, uh, good morning and buenos dias to everyone. Uh, my name is Hugo Soto Martinez and I'm the council member for the 13th district and I am very proud to say that I am also a renter. <laughs> now, we know that in the city, more than 250,000 of our residents spend over 90% of their income on rent. And I'm here to say that that is not right. Eso no es justo. No podemos tener una ciudad donde más de 250 mil personas gastan más de 90% su ingreso en renta. That is not right. When we think about what does that do to families? What does that do to children? What does that do to the parents trying to make ends meet? That is not the way our society should be running. No es la manera que nuestra sociedad debe de mantener. For these people, whether they're fast food workers, domestic workers, or seniors living on a fixed income, a strong, strong rent control ordinance is the difference between staying in their homes or falling into homelessness. Because we know that the largest population falling into homelessness is folks that are senior citizens. These are literally folks who have no longer working who are ending up on the street. And these are the folks that we are fighting for. And we're fighting for the majority of renters in the city who are classified as Ren Burton because we know the majority of this city are renters. La mayoría de la gente que vive en Los Angeles es gente que renta. We're fighting to make 3% the maximum rent in increase for rent control units, not the minimum. Yeah. El 3% debería de ser el aumento máximo, no el mínimo. Yeah. Are y'all with that? Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. Because in the last 20, in, in 23 of the last 30 years, landlords were allowed to, to rent, to increase the rent higher than inflation. And we know, and, and you, we oftentimes hear that rent, uh, landlords come in and say, you know, the insurance costs are going up, operating costs are going up. But what the report showed was that it's actually not a very large percentage that goes towards those expenses. 
But you know where the rest of those, the rest of that money went? You know where the rest of that profit went? It went into their pockets. They were not covering their costs of, 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 of renting out these units. They were fattening their pockets off of working class people. That's what they were doing. And we know that these corporate landlords, these multinational private equity companies have plenty of money and they're trying to find any single mechanism to tr continue to squeeze people, the working people of Los Angeles, the people that make this city run. So are we ready for a system that is good for working people instead of corporate greed? Yeah. Estamos listos por un sistema que trabaja para la clase trabajadora y no las corporaciones? Are we ready to fight for a 3% that is the cap and not the floor? Yeah. Are we going to win? Yeah. Porque tener un techo es un Tener un techo es un Así es, muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, thank you, Councilman, very much. Our next speaker is... Uh, from Public Council, Christina Boyard. Good morning, everyone. My name morning. is Christina. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Christina Boyer. I'm an attorney at Public Council and a member of Keep LA House. The rent is too damn high for the residents of the city of LA. We've heard that day today from Mohammed, from Gloria, from Rosa, and there is overwhelming data to show that this is the case. That's because Larso is severely outdated without being updated in 40 years. We are still waiting on the housing department to release its analysis on the economic roundtable study, but the clock is ticking for tenants. Many RSO tenants will be receiving rent increase notices in January. LAHD must release its analysis and recommendations as soon as possible so council can take action before the year's end. The economic roundtable study confirms that the city can and should lower the rent increases. First, it shows that Larso's current annual allowable rent increase formula serves landlords at the detriment of tenants. With a 3% minimum increase that has allowed increases far beyond inflation for decades, and an 8% maximum that is significantly higher than the majority of other RSOs in California. Keep LA House is demanding a formula based on 60% of CPI with a 3% cap and no floor. Rent should never be able to be raised more than 3%. Second, that study found the one to two additional percent increase if your landlord provides gas and electricity substantially outweighs the cost of providing those utilities, costing RSO tenants an extra $12 million a year. The study recommended to move th remove this increase, which we are also demanding. Third, that study found no evidence that small landlords are struggling more than their corporate counterparts. The study underscored that there should not be a different formula for small landlords and to, to ensure all tenants have equal protection. We are demanding no different formula for small landlords. Finally, the study did not specifically address the 10% additional occupant increase under Larso, but overall it showed that Larso as it stands unfairly favors landlords. Thus, that increase, which allows an additional 10% to be added to your rent for each person who moves in after your firstborn must be removed to make Larso effective in keeping rent increases low and predictable for vulnerable tenants, namely those who need to take in struggling loved ones and cannot afford a 10, 20, 30% rent increase. That is unreasonable under a rent control law. That's right, that's, that's right. right. Look at the data from this study. Listen to the stories tenants have brought today and for decades about rent increases being out of control. We need a stronger Larso now. Yes. With an annual rent increase formula based on 60% of inflation, a 3% cap, and no floor, no utility bump, no additional occupant increase, and no different formulas for small landlords. These are not abstract demands. A U.S. Government Accountability Office showed that a $100 increase in median rent was associated with a 9% increase in homelessness. Every percent matters for tenants. It will determine whether someone can stay in their homes or is forced to leave. That's why we're asking council members today to support our demands and for LAHD to release its report on the economic roundtable study immediately. Thank you. Okay. Voy a tratar de resumir brevemente. Eh, la compañera Cristina con la, con la organización Public Council. Uh, básicamente para recordar otra vez que esta fórmula, verdad, es 
más de 40 años que, es, que no ha sido eh, cambiada. Esta fórmula eh, no permite que las rentas sean más justas y tenemos que cambiarla. Ha habido un estudio, ¿verdad?, por la Mesa Directiva Económica, donde eh, este estudio ha estado listo desde mayo, pero desafortunadamente el Departamento de Vivienda no lo ha publicado. Estamos diciéndole al Departamento de Vivienda que el tiempo se acaba, el tiempo se agota y muchas personas están sufriendo estos altos costos de renta. Eh, también es bien importante recalcar que esta fórmula de, de la renta está basado en la inflación de 60%, ¿verdad? Y es bien importante recalcar que pedimos un, uh, un, mínimo, un máximo de 3%. No que sea el mínimo, que no se empiece ahí, sino que ahí se topen las rentas. También queremos agregar que no hay ninguna evidencia actual que demuestre que los dueños pequeños están sufriendo y que se necesita uh, tener esta fórmula. No hay ninguna evidencia y es lo que recalca este estudio. Lo que sí demuestra es de que esta fórmula ayuda no, y favorece a los dueños lo cual no es justo para inquilinos. Nuestras demandas son las siguientes. Necesitamos un mínimo incremento, a, a un máximo incremento de 3%. No queremos que se incremente un eh, por ciento adicional por cada utilidad, por ejemplo, agua, electricidad. Y no necesitamos un incremento adicional por cada inquilino que se mude a la unidad. Actualmente es un... Uh, por un 10% adicional, no necesitamos una fórmula adicional o diferente para dueños pequeños. Uh, y por último, lo que recalca un estudio que se ha hecho es que cada, por cien, cada incremento de, 10, de 100 dólares que se le da a inquilinos, incrementa un 9% de personas que pueden terminar en la, car en la calle. Voy a repetir otra vez. Hay un estudio que demuestra que por cada incremento que las personas reciben de 100 dólares, hay un incremento, ¿verdad?, un porcentaje de 9% que eh, personas pueden terminar en la calle. Y por eso es bien importante cambiar esta fórmula y lo necesitamos hacer ahora. Gracias. All right. Thank you, Christina. Last but not least. Last time I was up here, I had a problem with this name. Let's see if I got it right this time, all right? Councilwoman Unessas Hernandez from Council District. Thank you. That was perfect. Thank you. Buenos dias. Good morning, everybody. All right. I am so honored to be able to join you all. I want to give a few thank yous before I start. Thank you to Keep House of LA, uh, Council Member Hugo Soto Martinez, and Nithya Raman, Sage, Ace, uh, the Public Council, Democratic Socialists of America, Inner City Struggle, Cochirla, SEIU 721, Ground Game, Proyecto Pastoral, Inner City uh, Law Center. All of these folks have come together to make sure that we can keep people and families in their housing. And today, I'm here because the rent is too damn high. And we need real change, and we don't have that yet. And without that, Rembrandt and Angelinos will be forced to shoulder even higher costs that they cannot afford. Since the start of 2024, in, in this district of Council District 1 that I represent, we've seen over 100 eviction filings every single week. And that is about 1,400 uh, 1, all across the city as well. And these, uh, most of these evictions are for non-payments, but there are many that even go undocumented. These are just the reported cases. The time has come to update the rent stabilization ordinance and put an end to outdated annual allowable rent increases that are out of reach for too many households. A rent increase isn't just another bill. It's the difference between paying for groceries or keeping a roof over your family's head. And no one should have to make that choice. To the parents, the single mothers, elders, and young people holding down multiple jobs just to care for your families, this fight is for you and we are with you. Last year, council approved an economic study of the RSO increased rent formula. That study is done. That study is done. And now 
I hope that they hear me, but I'm calling on my colleagues on the Los Angeles Housing Department to report back to the city council immediately with this report. We need this report on the council's agenda to take action before any rent hikes are allowed. What, what is powerful about today is that we're not alone in this work. More than 100 organizations across Los Angeles, environmental groups, labor groups, tenant associations, and more are supporting the demands. Rental protections, fast action from the LA Housing Department, and a housing system that puts people over profit. It's time to update the LA RSO ordinance, hold our systems accountable, and allow renters to live uh, in a place where that they can afford and that they can work in. Thank you for uh, being here today, standing with each other, and helping the city of LA become a leader in the fight to keep families housed. Thank you. Uh, and I'll be very brief in Spanish. Estamos aquí porque las rentas están exageradamente, exageradamente altas y sin un cambio real, los angelinos que están abogados por los altos alquileres tendrán que enfrentar aún más costos que simplemente no pueden pagar. Desde el inicio del 2024, en Distrito 1 hemos visto más de 100 desalojos cada semana y más de 1,400 en toda la ciudad. La mayoría de estos desalojos son por falta de pago de renta y, y vamos a ser muy claro que estos son los únicos casos que han sido reportados. Sabemos que mucha gente son desalojados o pierden sus viviendas en este proceso y nunca, nunca son reportados. Ha llegado el momento de actualizar la ordenanza de estabilización de rentas y acabar con los aumentos anuales permitidos que están fuera del alcance de muchas familias. Un aumento de renta no solo es otro cobro, es la diferencia de poder darle de comer a su familia o mantener un techo para tu familia. Y nadie debe de tener que hacer esa elección. A los padres, madres solteras, los jóvenes, nuestra gente de tercera edad que están trabajando para, para sacar adelante a sus familias, esta lucha es para ustedes y estamos con ustedes. El año pasado el Consejo de la Ciudad aprobó un estudio económico sobre la fórmula de aumento de la ordenanza. Este estudio ya está listo. Ahora le pido a mis colegas y el Departamento de Vivienda de Los Ángeles que informe el Consejo de la Ciudad de esto inmediatamente. No podemos esperar y no podemos entretener uh, uh, subiendo la renta si no tenemos este estudio. Lo que hace hoy poderoso es que no estamos solas en, este, en, este, en esta pelea, esta lucha. Más de 100 organizaciones en Los Ángeles, grupos ambientes, sindicatos, asociaciones de inquilinos, apoyan los siguiente, las siguientes demandas. Protecciones reales para los inquilinos, acciones rápidas del Departamento de Vivienda de Los Ángeles y un sistema de vivienda que ponga a las personas por encima de las ganancias. Aquí estamos en la lucha. Gracias por estar aquí, por apoyar este mov movimiento y por apoyar a a empujar a la ciudad de Los Ángeles que haga un buen trabajo y que sea un líder en la lucha de mantener a las familias en sus hogares. Debemos de actualizar la ordenanza de estabilización de rentas de LA y hacer que nuestro sistema rinda cuentas y permitir que los inquilinos puedan vivir donde trabajan. Gracias. All right, thank you, council member. I said that was the last speaker, but I lied. I'm sorry about that, y'all. So our next speaker is Nayela. She's from Unite Here. Oh, there you go. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nayeli Gomez, Unite Here Local 11 in support with all of the tenant groups and the unions. Rent continues to increase, but our wages stay stagnant. Support the housing communities in Los Angeles by having a permanent cap of a maximum of 3%. We need bold solutions like raising the wages and lowering the rent. We'll continue to fight to raise the wages and to demand a permanent change. The rent indeed is too damn high to live in California, period. We need a rent cap. Si se puede. a la compañera, ¿verdad?, eh, del sindicato Unite Here, ¿verdad?, con los trabajadores de los hoteles. Está aquí para apoyar también que se actualice esta fórmula. ¿Por qué? Pues es bien importante. Los trabajadores son inquilinos. También tienen que pagar rentas. Y desafortunadamente, otra vez, los ingresos son muy bajos. No es suficiente para poder trabajar y vivir en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Así que recalca y realza el mensaje ¿Verdad? 
lo que se está exigiendo, ¿verdad? Que se actualice esta fórmula para que las personas sean protegidas y no estén gastando todo su salario en las rentas. Gracias. Thank you. Okay. Before we close, I would like to thank all the speakers that came forward. I'd like to thank the press for coming out. I'd like to thank our members of the coalition for coming out. Thank you very much. All right, so in closing, I'm quite sure you want to talk to some of the people that spoke so you'll be able to talk to them after this is over. So we're going to close out. And this is a call to action. We're going to have to get this passed. We're going to have to get this to working because next year our rent is going to go up higher. So we need something after that so we won't have to pay high rents. We have a cap forever at 3%. So we need that. So we hope the press get the word out about this press conference and let the city know what's going on because everybody don't know about what's going on. So I'd like to say again, thank you very much for coming out and we appreciate it very much. This is what community looks like. This is what community looks like.